Hey, what's up, folks? It's me, Sonny T, back at you with another episode of podcast from marketers.com right here on YouTube. You can catch me on SoundCloud at sunny t one funnelhackerpro.com is my Facebook group. Come over there and join the squad. Stealthy Millionaire on Instagram, Podcast for Marketers on YouTube, Billionaire Vids with an S on Snapchat, and Billionaire Vid on Twitter, Podcast for Marketers.com. Come over there and get a free MP3 player. You have to pay for your fucking shipping. Smash that thumbs up if you like this video and sub fucking subscribe to this video if you like, or excuse me, to my uh, content, my channel, if you like the content, man. I'm uploading videos every day, boom. Today, man, is Mailbag Monday. Um, What is the deal with you guys in the LLC? What the fuck is this, man? Why are you guys so caught up with the whole, I mean, like literally posting up in a in a group and asking, should I start an LLC? Come on, man. Really? Should I have a doing business as or an LLC? First of all, man, none of us said that we're lawyers. Why are you asking a group of people that you don't know something so fucking important to your life? I have no idea. But I'm not going to let my shit ride, especially in the United States of America, right? Of all places or or the UK, would I let my personal freedom or anything ride on what a group of motherfuckers that I don't know tell me on whether or not to get an LLC? That is, you know what, man? I'm probably going to start banning dudes that ask that question out of the group because that's probably one of the most dumbest questions that I've seen posted. And it gets posted over and over and over again. Should I get an LLC? Should I get an LLC? Should I? What the fuck? Stop asking that stupid question, man. Because my answer is always going to be get to business first. If you can't afford an LLC, then why the fuck ask? Because usually when you say get an LLC, yeah, but it's $1,000 and I can't afford it right now. Then why the fuck ask? It's a total waste of time. Um, of everybody else's time and resources that we could be doing something else, man. Figure out on your own if you want to start a fucking uh, corporation or an LLC, whatever it is in your country. Figure this shit out, man, and go talk to an attorney. If your country is not, and no country really is, right? They're not going to just come looking you out and finding out, oh, you're on online doing business on the internet, uh, blah, right? But now if companies decide to say, hey, man, listen, um, we want to pay somebody with a check, and um, they're going to ask you, what's your company name? What's your company name? You know, and they're going to write a check out to a company name. Then, yeah, you're going to need an LLC. But in today's PayPal world, you don't have to worry about that shit. That was some shit I needed to be concerned about when I was younger. Right. We used to have to have a doing business as because people would want to write a check out to your business. Right. But now on PayPal, you can just say I have a business on PayPal without an LLC. They'll put the PayPal in your business name. You send out your you send out invoices from your PayPal. People pay them. And that's the end of the story. Payoneer, same story. You can use Payoneer to send out invoices in your business name. And nobody gives a shit. If you decide that you want to pay taxes, then go get a fucking LLC, right? But if it was me starting out, not knowing where I'm going to land, not knowing what you know what business I want to be in, you know, I and I'm going to try to refer you back to Cry Lopez. Now he did say this. He's like, listen, don't start an LLC you know, or a corporation, use like a umbrella corp, right? That's my little umbrella there. <laughs> right, those are little raindrops. <laughs> Does that look like umbrella? Yeah. <laughs> I missed my calling. All right, so use an umbrella corp and just call it, you know, uh, Trayvon's Lamont, Lamont's Business LLC right? You know, Leon, 
Leon's Business, LLC. And then that's it. And then you can kind of put everything underneath that. And then when you have different little doing business ads, you can put it underneath the umbrella if you want to. But if you can't afford to do it, man, you, you know, most of you guys are bootstrapped, right? Most of you guys, I wouldn't take 50% of my budget to form an LLC. Fuck no, man. I'm getting ad money. So, man, man, Jesus Christ, stop asking that fucking stupid question. And if anybody asked that question again, refer them to this fucking video, man. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I mean it. Jesus. Like, why in the fuck would you ask that question, man? So now, this wasn't really a question, but I saw this posted. I believe his name was Ollie. I want to call him Oil, but I just can't believe that that's his name, right? <laughs> is his name Ollie? I think so. Yes, Ollie. And he's in the group and he's saying he's got 14 days. His parents are telling him to pack him up and move him out. Either you pay rent or you get the fuck out, right? That's the way out is right there. It's that way. <laughs> and he says he's trying to start. A social media marketing agency or whatever, a digital marketing agency. In the next 14 days, here's the thing. He has zero experience. What the fuck? I got 14 days to pay rent or I got to get this way out. That way is out. Right? I got to get the fuck out. And I'm trying to start a social media marketing agency in 14 days with no experience. I mean, how does it sound that I laid it out like that? How does it sound really, Ollie? Now that I've laid it out that way for you, does it look like you should be spending your time with a social media marketing agency starting a business that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing and you got to be out in 14 days unless you pay rent. I would spend my $14, 14 days begging, working, and selling my parents on why I shouldn't get kicked out in 14 days. That's what I would spend my 14 days doing right now. If I didn't want to be on the streets in that fucking order. Begging my friends, family, and whoever I got for 10 bucks a piece. Well, you guys got pounds. I don't know how to make that fucking sign, right? But it's something like that, right? Something? Something like that, right? So I would be asking for 10 pounds a piece for noodles, top ramen, whatever I could do to help my family out. The next thing I would be doing is working somewhere. 14 days, I would probably be crashing the phones. That's the fast, fastest way to get money without having to do physical labor, like going to fucking uh, do construction work and making big rocks into small rocks, right? So I'd be crashing the phones. I know that if I was crashing the phones, I would get paid in at least 21 days. All right, so I got a seven-day window. So then what would I do? I would go back to begging Hey, man, listen, I'm going to get kicked out in 14 days, but I get paid in 21. Can I crash at your place for seven days? That's what I would be doing, right? I would go back to begging for 10 pounds, right? That would get me noodles. Don't eat, any, don't, don't eat anything but noodles, man. I'm telling you. So get noodles. And you could get some of those, uh, what are those things called? Those uh, dried shrimps. You can get the, you know, freeze dried food, freeze dried, um, like meats and stuff and drop them into noodles and they'll, ex they'll expand. Right? right. And then get some of that fake squeeze cheese, noodles, squeeze cheese and, fr and dried fucking shit. Right. You don't need but 20, tw a pack of, um, oh, how, how long will a pack last us? Two cartons of 40. That lasts us about a month. Right. Longer than that. Yeah. Longer than that right. So that would last him. What? At least. A couple months of noodles, right? So that's what I would do. I would beg for 20 pounds from friends for noodles and freeze-dried fucking meat. Then I would go back to work on the phones, crashing the phones, 
selling my parents on the fact that, hey, man, listen, I do have a job. I'll be able to pay rent in 21 days. Can I get a seven-day window? If not, I would be begging my friends for that seven-day window, right? So you get what I'm, go I'm going here, right? So I'd be begging my friends for that seven-day window, getting noodles, because you don't want to go to somebody's house begging for a place to stay and eating. So what you need now is you need a kettle, which you're you're a Brit. You have a kettle somewhere. There's no way you're going anywhere without tea, right? So you've got a kettle, one of the electric kind to plug in your, so you're going to lay in somebody's room on a couch or whatever, plug in your kettle. You need a, one of those little camping kits. Go to AliExpress and get it. Well, no, you don't have enough time for that. You got to go to uh, Amazon and get one of those camping kits. It's an all-in-one folding deal right and pack that up with your fucking noodles right and then you're just gonna have your kettle you're gonna heat up your water you're gonna cook your noodles and you're gonna sit there and be quiet for seven days until mom lets you back in the house dude that's what your plan should be man you got 14 days dude actually you don't have 14 days you posted that up now you have 13 it's fucking past one in the you're in the uk so you're in the same time zone as me well you're hour uh hour before me right so you've got 13 days now <laughs> no fucking way dude no way would i try to do a social media marketing agency in 13 days no <laughs> jesus christ all right, let's clear this out. <laughs> I just wanted to like a tent and a sleep. Hey man, they, they got all kind of free places to live over there, man. You know what I would honestly do in my situation? Let me tell you what I would do in my because I'm a grown ass man. I can't go living on somebody's couch. He sounded pretty young, right? Yeah. But what would I do in the UK? Um, I've seen them. You guys got lots of um, mobile homes there that used to be in the parks on sale for like. 700 pounds between 700 and like 1600 pounds right and i've seen property over there that you can probably get for in the area 10,000 pounds right or no you know what i would do you know what i would do what would you do you know what i would do i would go get good old tilly I would go get good old narrow boat Tilly, man. That's what I would do. You guys got that shit over there, man. Narrow boats. I would go get a narrow boat for 10 grand if I were you, man. That's what I would do. I wanted to live on a narrow boat over there. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it is, man. And you can live for free. Now, the thing is, is that if you want to live on the weekend, you got to pay like 200 pounds, not the weekend, during those winter time. Um, if you want, if you want to stay in one place and you don't want to move around and be transient and you just kind of want to stay in one place, you got to pay 200 pounds to the government and then you can stay in one place and you don't have to fucking move around. It's totally free. And the coal is free. And there's one dude, look up good old bold Tilly. And he says his total yearly cost for Tilly and living, living there was 1200 pounds a year. That's what he paid, and that was for his heating costs with the coal, and the coal, the coal boats come by and drop it off to you, right? Awesome fucking, that's what I would be doing if I were you, dude. I'd be trying to scrape up 10 grand right now. Mm -hmm. Fuck my parents. I'd be out. Good old Bo Tilly, man. And what he did is he worked at like a part-time at a little, um, uh, a little, he was like a grocery, like a little grocery store dude, right? But he made his money on YouTube. Telling people how to live on a narrow boat. It's a big fucking niche over there. That's what I'd be doing if I were you, dude. You're young, you can do it. I would do it now. Yeah. I didn't do it here. Um, I didn't I don't I didn't like it here as much as I liked it in, in you guys got some cool fucking marinas. They got some okay ones here. Yeah, we looked into it. We, we did. It. We did. We looked into it, man. It's narrow boat. Look up. Good old Tilly. That's what I would do. <laughs> I'm glad I thought about that. Okay, so now. I've been doing everything about sales, man, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the takeaway. I am a takeaway beast. All right, so there's another guy that didn't know how to sell, and this is my, I am the asshole. All right, this is the sunny takeaway, man. I am known for this. 
All of my business partners love me for it. And it is the absolute best sales tactic ever when you know how to pull it off. I'm a total dickhead about it and I pull it off perfectly, right? So when you're doing a sales technique, well, a sales conference or a sales call, learn how to take away the sale and disqualify the person. Once you've talked on to the phone, let's say, for instance, you're talk, call, talking to a guy. Let's say it's John in the group. And I call John up on the phone and he's like, hey, Sonny. You guys heard him how he talks, right? <laughs> he tries to, hey, Sonny. He tries to talk like me. It totally fucked it up. All right. So, so let's say, say I'm talking to John on the phone and I say, hey, John, what's going on? And I'm saying, hey, John, listen, man, I got this house for sale over here in France. I know you want the house. Yeah, I want the house. And he's humming and hawing. And he's like, yeah, well, how much is it going to be? And I'm like, it's 10,000, or let's just say 30,000 euros for the house, right? I got 30,000 euro house. It's close to the beach, blah, blah, blah. And he's humming and hawing. You finally just say to him, and don't come with some lame ass. <laughs> There's this Brit the other day that did this to me, and I totally fucking smashed her. But she's some lame ass, and she was like, uh, I've got other people that want to move in, and they're willing to pay, you know, right now, sight unseen, six months before I'm going to have it. Listen, man, you can cut that shit out. <laughs> so let's say he's humming and hawing, and I finally just say, John, you know what, man? I don't think that this is the place for you, man. I'm, what I'm going to do, man, is I'm going to pass on you right now. All right, so I'll tell you what, man. If I have the place... You know, in the next six months or so, man, I'll give you a call back, but I'm going to let you go. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. This is exactly when you get taken away, man. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, this was a, the lady I'm telling you about was uh, selling a house where I'm at right now. And well, I was going to lease the house from her first because I want to make sure I like the house. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll buy the house from you. If I dig it, oh, Sonny, we've got other people flying in. Hey, listen, man, you know what, man, Margaret, I think this is not, I don't think this is a good fit. Hey, you know, stop talking to me and listen, I'll tell you what you do, man. Talk to the other people that you're dealing with right now. And if they t pass on it, man, give me a call back. But this, this doesn't look like it's a good fit. No, 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 no. This is, you know, she totally bagged up all the way up and adjust them. Let make them adjust themselves. If you, this this has, this goes all the way back to the roots of a fuck you fund, right? You put yourself in a position where you don't give a fuck, right? Now, if you really aren't in that position, you really have to act as if you don't care. You're busy. I'm on a call. Remember, scarcity. If you're not available to people 100% of the time, all the time, and it's scarce, they really got to talk to you and find out what's going on, man. So let me give you let me give you an example of scarcity that I had. I don't know if you guys remember when the credit thing in the States was huge, man. So I had this deal where I could um, augment your credit in the United States, right? I, could, I had a um, thing and... <laughs> Might have been half ass gray area. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. I don't live there. So, but I could add um, lines. These are legit lines of credit. Okay. From um, uh, furniture stores and jewelry stores. Okay. And we could add legit lines to raise your credit score up to, you know, 725 in the 800 range FICO, okay? And I just was a middleman, really, okay? So we charged something like, uh, if I remember right, my bigger package was like $1,200, okay? I was actually living in London at the time. I had a website up for it. I was getting total organic traffic for it. I know you guys are like, damn, Sonny, how much shit have you done? Every fucking thing, man. I do whatever I have to do to get money, right? But this was just a side hustle. And when people used to call me, the first thing I would tell them, say, hey, listen, man, you're going to have to schedule this call out a little bit. I can't I can't really talk to you right now. Um, when are you available? Are you available next week, like Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, I just got one question for you, though, man. I just. All right, man, what do you got? That's what I would say. OK, you got to make this quick, though. What do you got? OK, so if I pay you today, blah, 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 blah. Hey, listen, man, listen, I'll tell you what. Right now, man, I can't answer that question. But yeah, get your. Okay, what do you have? Do you have 
blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what, man. Email that. Do you have a pen and paper right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Email me your information to this um, email, and I'll try to get back to you tonight. Are you guys hearing this? Are you hearing this? Now, sh- I'm s- sure enough, I was sitting in my flat. I was in Kensington, right? <laughs> Oh, at Olympia Station, right? Sure enough, I'm sitting in my flat in my fucking underwears. I'm not busy. I'm not doing shit, man. I'm sitting up and eating bonbons, watching uh, Gordon somebody. Everybody's Gordon over there or Pippa. Gordon and Pippa on TV doing something, right? I wasn't doing anything. But hey, man, I'm so busy right now. So then I would call him up and I would toss him tons of value on a call. I would finally get on the call with him for 45 minutes. Right. And I would give him a ton of value on the call, tell him exactly how everything worked. And, you know, this was a bigger deal. But what I would do is I'm always trying to upsell them. The bigger upsell was 15 grand. OK. And that was for a full corporate package, uh, aged corporation and all kind of shit. Right. And so what I would do is immediately when they started balking, say, hey, man, listen, dude, I didn't have time to talk to you in the first fucking place. I tell you what you do, man. You talk to your business partners and talk. Hey, listen, and, I, and I'll get back with you. I got, a, I got three more calls to make right now. I've given you enough of my time right now, dude. And honestly, I don't have to do this. I don't have to, dude. I've got enough clients right now to last me from now until fucking forever. Now, I offered you the $1,200 package. Either you want that or you don't. But I tell you what we're not going to do. I've already spent 45 minutes with you over the phone. I make approximately $20,000 an hour. I've already given you enough money. That's the takeaway. Be a dick. Be a dick, especially when you have something you know they want, especially when it's incoming calls. Ooh, when it's incoming calls, you're done. (laughs) When it's incoming, it's over. Learn the art of the takeaway. Now, I'm not going to give you everything right here in this one mailbag Monday, but look it up. Just go look it up and learn the art of the takeaway, man, especially when you have this is how you set it up, man. You immediately tell you can't be thirsty, though. See, that's the problem. See, right now, Ollie, he's about to get kicked out in 14 days, right? 13 days. <laughs> Ollie, I don't mean to laugh at you, but 13 days. Ollie's going to get kicked out, right? And he's trying to, damn, what a lucky number. He's trying to make sure that he gets some type of business in the next 13 days or he's going to get kicked out. Do you think he's going to hang up on anybody? Do, do you? In the gallery? Do, he won't hang up on anybody, will he? Why? Because he's fucking needy. And he's going to lose because of that. And he's, whoa! Listen at the fucking folks in the gallery. He's going to lose because of it. Wow, that's my wife that said that. That's some heavy words right there, folks. <laughs> it is. And it's because you're too needy, Ollie, and anybody else, not just picking on him, and anybody else that's out there, right? You're too needy. You won't hang up the fucking phone, right? But what you got to do is you got to put on your big boy pants. Yeah. You got to put on your big boy pants and hang up the fucking phone. No matter what, man. Ollie, I promise you, you're going to call somebody up and you're going to say, you're going to offer some value to them. You're going to give them value, whatever. You're going to say, hey, man, I'm on another call, man. Can you call me back? Hit me back in, I don't know, two days, man. I'm really busy right now, especially if they called you. After you say, for instance, you left a message and they called you back. You're in position. You got to put on your big boy pants and you got to say, hey, man, I can't talk to you right now. Call me back in two hours, man. Two hours. If they follow that instruction, you got them. And when they call you back in two hours after that's their second call. Pay attention to that. That is their number two call. You called them one time. Right? They called you back. You told them to fuck off. And then they called you a second time after you told them to call them back, call you back. What does that show? That shows interest in what you have. 
right? And this, you can get to this point. This is when you take it away. And I do takeaways when I call them, <laughs> right? I've done it and you're going to learn how to do it, but that's when you take it away. So when they call back that second time, you're going to do your call, right? Now, now, folks, this is, this is not, I told you, you got to put in your big boy pants. This is not for newbies. But if you learn it, look it up online. If you learn it, you're going to be a beast, right? Because I do this shit all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you talk to any of my business partners, they love giving me the phone. They'll be like, hey, man, let me talk. Let me let you talk to the account manager, man. Hold on. Here's Sonny. And when I get on the phone, dude, it's over. Yeah. Hey, John, what's, go who, what's going on here? Yeah. What do you listen, man? We've already given you how much? What kind of discounts you got there? Hey, well, listen, now, listen, uh, I already talked to um, David. He told me all about your account. It sounds like a win win situation. What's the problem? What's holding you up? I'm asking the hard questions when I get on the phone. We talked about this in the last video. What 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 do we need to do to make this happen right now? I got about 15 people at my desk right now. I need to go take care of some other accounts. But for whatever reason, David seems to think that we're a good fit. So what do we need to do right now, John? I don't really have a lot of time to talk about this, but what do we need to do right now? What's your problem? Well, then they'll, they'll hum and haw on the phone. And as soon as you hear the, um, uh, well, hey, John, listen, it sounds like you're full of shit. It sounds like to me, John, it sounds like you have no reason, but you're just trying to, for whatever reason, hold this deal up. And I get you want more information, but I'm sorry, John, I don't have time to give you more information. Go Google it, man. There's a lot of shit on Google about what we do. Let me get back to you because maybe we're just not a good fit. Well, hold on. Yeah. I'm telling you, hold on. No, wait. That's what you're going to get. When you hear that, no wait here's what you need to do right then when you hear that no wait this is what you need to do coffee break <sighs> <laughs>